Savannah. And I told the makeup artist, I was like, I'm basically a tomboy that has no idea how to put on foundation. I got started in music because my mom actually is a singer songwriter. And when I was growing up, she was always writing and singing literally the minute I woke up, I would hear her playing the piano. Like that's kind of how I would wake up all the time. So she kind of brought me into songwriting and I didn't even know it. In high school, I was threatening to leave high school <laughs> and my parents weren't gonna let me do that. So I started to leave school early and I would go take voice and dance classes. I wasn't sure I was gonna go to college and I just wanted to be a singer. And I was like, I'm moving to New York and I'm gonna be a singer. So the whole summer I spent in New York City with my sister. I was 17 at the time. And the agreement with my parents was that it was under the condition that I got some kind of music industry job. So I ended up being too young to get a job with, no one would hire me because they were like, I wasn't even 18. I couldn't get into shows or anything. I just worked at a bakery in Union Square and I just took voice and dance all summer and I would like sneak into these R&B clubs that I wasn't supposed to be in at my age. And I would just wait until like three in the morning for a chance to sing. I was in school, I went to Berkeley College of Music. After college, I moved to Nashville. That move was prompted by a song that I wrote. I The first song I finished and recorded and put out, it ended up on a country radio station in Baltimore. And I didn't even know I was doing country. I thought it was like, I thought I was an R&B singer. And so, when they picked up the song, I like won some contests I didn't even know I was in. And then one of my favorite record labels ever here heard the song and I flew down and auditioned for them. And the person who set up the meeting before they told me who it was, I like already kind of knew who it was. It was the weirdest thing. I had like a weird premonition about it. And when I got to Nashville, they told me who I was meeting with. It ended up being that label. And we met and I sang for them and nothing happened. And I never even heard if they liked me or anything. So I was kind of heartbroken over that. But then it, it got me like thinking about Nashville and how it might be a good place for me and how I could get involved in the songwriting community. So all that kind of happened and I definitely hopped around a bit. But, but that's what got me to Nashville, like meeting with a label and having someone take me seriously as a singer. Some lessons I learned kind of going through New York and Berkeley and all that would probably be stay in your lane. The minute you start to look at somebody else and that what they're doing, you lose so much time and just you lose your own passion for what you're doing if you're spending time comparing yourself, yourself to somebody else. And at Berkeley, it was such a crash course in learning how to do that because there are artists everywhere and everyone's really serious about what they do and you're all competing for the same spots in different shows that the school has and that was a big a big lesson and I constantly have to remind myself that now to kind of keep my head in the right place in Nashville I definitely with good days and bad days my dad always says um, never get too high and never get too low so I kind of always keep that in my head because I used to kind of be all over the place <laughs> and now I just if something good happens I I don't really think about it too much if it's if something bad happens I feel like something good's about to happen so I just try to keep a level head that way because it can kind of get you down sometimes but um, it's also really exciting and like learning how to persevere is a really fulfilling feeling too so so yeah I keep that in my mind all the time did we get everything yeah I think so